Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonesai. On today's show, I'm going to try to fix this forest. Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonesai. Uh, in the sense that I have a branch that splits into two, shoots in here, so I'm probably going to cut this thing off right about here this fall. I've taken my uh, knob cutter and I've gotten rid of some of that. I just put them on the bottom, growing upwards into the we bay. We the trees and then we water as we need to. We try to get rid of those air pockets. Thanks for joining me, everybody. It's the first weekend in November, so most of my work now is going to be inside my plant room. But before we get to this forest, this variegated ficus forest, I'm going to take you back outside to the cabin cold frame that we worked on last video. It's uh, complete and it's ready to show you. So let's go take a quick peek outside and then we'll head back in here to the warm plant room and work on the forest. First weekend in November and my bench is looking kind of lonely. Got everything in the cold frames but this guy, my tamarack, just loving the color. Next to my benches is usually our vegetable garden and I put all my Minnesota hardy trees in a nice big cluster. So I have a little bit of a yard waste bags with leaves in there wrapped up a, with a tarp so it doesn't get uh, ruined. It's going to block some of the wind from the northwest, protect some of these trees. I've got some chicken wire on my birch clump and my new cherry tree. And I've got all my junipers and some of my deciduous all there, hopefully keeping away from the rabbits with the fence. And we'll have to keep an eye on those squirrels, but once we get a layer of snow in here, all this will be protected for the winter. So all the trees are inside the cabin now. We'll go in here and take the door down. and take a peek inside. So I got my little Buddha in here to keep things uh, nice and healthy and in good spirits. So I have my trees in here. Many don't need winter protection, but they will go into hibernation just fine with an average temp of about 42 degrees right now. I've got uh, my Japanese maple there. Japanese maple here, my new buy, the big thick trunk. Just in case I get some mouse in here or something, I put a little wrap around here because I've got a nice new shoot growing right here on this great big thick trunk. I want to protect that one. Got my weeping willows, my blue arrow juniper, nice and tall. So there's my heater. My water sticks around the heater keeping it around room temperature. Notice the heater has a little bit of space here so we don't dry out any trees. The driest tree might be my little weeping willow here. Not too worried about that one. The fan up top from the last video kicks on every two hours. And my new purchase is my Bluetooth thermometer. So the Bluetooth thermometer is sending me the signal back to my phone. So the thermometer is in the cold frame out in the cabin and on my phone I can just uh, juice up the app and there it is. 41.2 degrees outside in the cold frame, 82% humidity. If I want to go ahead and check some more details, uh, I, you can see up there by the hour, day, week, month or even the year. We'll click on day and that's today so far. So you can see the nice pattern. Max is showing about 46 degrees, the minimum 40 degrees, so it's staying in the low to mid 40s all day long, all evening long. The red, uh, my alarm is set, uh, I think at 70 or 75 percent humidity, so it's showing in the red. I gotta change that setting. So very, very cool app. If I want to go out to the week, I could see the week. I had a little spike there, spike there on Tuesday, but the max was only 48 degrees still with that spike, with the minimum being 39.8. So. Uh, you have to make sure you read that uh, data correctly. So there's by the hour. And again, if you wanted what's going on right now, it tells you. Super cool. Looking at my app though for my thermometer, looks like I've been keeping right between 45 at its peak 
and 39 at its minimum. So right in those low 40s through most of my day. So that is really cool. It's working. We haven't had, of course, the bitter cold of winter, but everything's a go. The system's working. And the trees are loving life right now. The biggest challenge will be reaching some of these back trees to get some watering, but with my water bottles that I have there with different uh, levels of spray that can come out of there, I'll be able to squirt all these trees and, and keep them healthy. So my variegated ficus tree did really, really well out on the bench this summer. And I did trim back a little bit of the foliage partway through the summer. And uh, it just really thickened up. It's the thickest it's uh, ever looked since I purchased this tree a couple of years ago. Uh, the trunks of the trees are getting a little bit thicker every year. It's got a little bit of a root flare on this bottom one here and this one over here. So things are moving. And though I could trim this a little bit right now and it would seem like it would fit a little bit better into this pot, uh, I'm ready for a new pot. This, this is going to go into just another size bigger so it'll just uh, it'll look a little bit better overall. So we're going to take this apart a little bit. But my first job is to see where I'm going to put it. And I don't have a lot of flat uh, pots in my collection. I don't have a lot of bigger pots in my collection. Most of mine are in that uh, less than 14 inch for sure range, 12, 8s, and 6s. But I do have a pot here that I acquired a year ago or so that I think is going to work for me today. So this is a nice pot. It is chopped. Uh, it's got some, uh, got some uh, chop information here that I can't read because it's not of my language. Uh, I do believe it came from Japan uh, from a former member of the Minnesota Bonsai Society who uh, no longer was working with trees and I was able to uh, get a good deal on some pots and such. So if I just put this pot in this pot, yeah, that's going to jump it up a level. Now this is a super nice pot that I probably will use for a different uh, variety of bonsai tree in the future. Um, but I just don't have a tree that's really going to fit in here next spring. I've taken an inventory of all my trees and what I think I might repot in. Though I might change my mind over the winter and next spring go, oh, what did I do that for? Uh, I'm going to give this uh, some more room to grow and a little bit... A little bit just more roominess for, for this uh, trio of variegated ficuses. So I'm going to take all of these trees out of here and, and then clean out uh, the soil and see how I can reposition them into this pot and to uh, give it a little bit more room. So we will do that. Typically my soil structure is one-third akadama, one-third pumice, and one-third lava rock. You may have noticed that this rock is a little darker in color and you don't see any of the white pumice. I experimented with this tree, or this little mini forest, and that I didn't put any pumice in here. It was going to hold a little bit more moisture with just the lava rock and the Akadama. These uh, variegated ficus trees seem to really respond to that this year and had good growth. Everything seemed really, really nice. So I think that's a pattern that I can continue. I can leave the Akadama and the lava rock for my next batch. And I can still skip the uh, pumice rock, I think. Knowing that it grew such such nice root structure here. And uh, it seems so healthy throughout the year. So the reason that I'm going to uh, put this in the new pot before I do anything with this particular styling is these trees on their own are not the most uh, glorious looking bonsai trees. You know, bonsai is an aesthetic art beauty in the eye of the beholder. You're going to 
you're going to style it with some great basic foundational bonsai skills and, and kind of rules and concepts. But you're going to style a tree kind of how you like it and what you're going after. I just recently watched one of the videos from one of my favorite video guys, Nigel Saunders in the Bonsai Zone, working on his Portulacara Afro trees, trying to look more like a, an African baobab tree concept with great big bulky uh, trunks and then the canopy up top. And so he's always got the uh, pictures of the trees that he wants his trees to simulate. So you're going to find the design for your trees. So my trees here, the point that I'm getting to as I try to get through all of this really massive root growth here, is um, these trees do not look that particularly wonderful all by themselves. But they sure develop into a nice forest of three after I put them in this pot and again used my experimental soil mixture to get these things growing. And I still feel connected. There we go. So I'm connected on this side, and there's the wire right there, twisted right there. Okay. So that wire, I can cut right there, and right there. And I still feel a little resistance. Uh -huh. and there we go. So there's that pot ready to clean up and use for a different uh, tree. So there's my three trees. So there's the wire mesh that just is grown into the roots, where the roots is growing through that guy. See that right there? <laughs> so I have a really nice root there. And it's growing right through that mesh. So I have two options. I can rip that thing right off and then just destroy that root or I can cut around the root, try to salvage it and see if I want to keep it for later. And it's so tight around that plastic that it probably eventually would just cut that root off with circulation. Yeah, a little damage to that root. So if the camera can pick up on that little light spot right there. Little damage. We tried. We'll see. The tree I'm sure will be fine. So these trees individually, as I said, not spectacular, but we're going to take them apart and put them in another forest structure because that's what I desire to have with these trees. Um, I may change my mind as I pluck through them, but I doubt it. So as we look at this tree right here, this, this root growth, we have a big strong presence here and a little bit of presence here, but it's very skinny, so we have not as much there. As I try to balance this out, I want these roots to go all the way around. I always put my hands together when I explain to people, we want the roots to go all the way around, so a nice radial pattern. Right now we have a big old finger that's up here and we have no finger over on this side right here. So a couple of these guys right here, we want to make sure they stay intact. We want those to, to grow and get bigger. And so we might trim this big thick one out here to try to get some more balance. I'm ready to put some wire into my pot. So my trees are not going to stand up in here all by themselves. So I have to get some wire in here. So. I only have two holes on the very far edges, so I have to put some wire in there and try to figure out and be creative on where I can uh, place uh, the, the trees on here. I found it kind of interesting when I was looking at this pot, there's little little circles here. Uh, placement of your tree. Get that main one up front and you've got a trio. It looks very symmetrical right now. I probably won't put them in those exact spots, but I found that very interesting in this pot. Let's get some wire for us.
very heavy trees. I don't need very thick wire. But I do need three. And I want it to go from side to side on the pot and lift up so they can crisscross and tie at some point. So I'm just going to take my measurement here. I'm going to go ahead and cut. And then I'll be able to do that a couple of times. Having only two holes makes it a little limiting on what I can do. We just have to put through the wires. Three of the holes. I'm going to come back here. Go up about that far. around and put the other three through. And these are traveling quite a long di di distance between wires so it'll be a little bit loose on the bottom but we will make it work. make these all about the same size. Now in looking at my bonsai soil collection, I do not have as much lava rock at the moment. I've got a new shipment coming in, but I do have a mix of lava, pumice, and akadama in my trusty bucket here. So I'm going to start with some of that for the bottom. And then I do have Akadama so now I can mix together my lava rock, my pumice Akadama mix where I have a little bit more Akadama than the other two. I think the trees will still love the soil mixture. What, what, what tree do I want to put in the front? What tree do I want to put in the back? And then how much root pruning do I have to do into now a bigger pot? So remember this is a bigger pot than the one it came from, but when it's all together it's going to fill it up quite nicely. So this tree right here has no growth over here. So if this was in the middle of a forest and it was on this side, yeah, the trees, branches that were growing to this side might have gotten shaded out, fallen off, broken off. Here's an old big branch that was cut by me. Um, so I could put that there. This side, to me, looks a little weaker because we're seeing this uh, sore right there. So what if we turn it over here and have this one be this side of the forest? And I got this nice growth over here that we can continue to, we can even wire it down a little bit and grow it this way. So that looks to be a little bit better there, unless it's in the middle, we'll see. This is that nice uh, nice one that could be right in the center, right in the foreground here, which had the nice growth here and here, nice split here, and we could, if we trim this all down later, and that could go right there possibly. And then I've got this guy over here, who again has a little bit of a Y. But it has no branches over here but one over here, so I would put that one this way. So it's because it's growing to the left here. It's got this Y right here. So I could have my forest look something like that. And these trees are not going to, of course, stand up for me nicely with one hand or two hands on the job. I already like the placement better than the last pot because the pot's bigger and I can give more depth of field. I can have that tree more in the back. 
And I actually can put this tree in the back and this forward tree right here. And I really like this design right here. It's real thick in the middle, but we're going to cut all that out. And as I come down and look at this a little bit lower, I'm, I am able to see kind of a foresty pattern that I, 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 I am okay with. So these are my branches off to the right. I got this guy who's just kind of nice. He's not even the thickest tree right now. This one's thicker and this one's a little bit thicker. Uh, but maybe this guy can grow and become the new lead. And I can trim these out to make this one appear to be a little bit taller. Um, so I really like that. As I step back, I can see this branch coming off to the side in the depth of the forest. This is the main tree up front, and this one's not quite far as back as this one. But it has this nice root structure here, and it has these branches over there. So from my, from my point of view, my perspective on this, I like this pattern. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut some of the roots on those trees and see if we can uh, get these things wired in. I'm going to give them a quick little squirt. We've been working for a while. We're drying out a little bit. So don't be afraid to squirt your roots. Get them moist. These are going to sit here for a little while. Okay. But first, I'm going to make these uh, uh, roots a little bit tamer. So as you can see on this tree, or I'll point out to you anyway, this tree is a little bit more ramified in the root system. Um, we've got a big section that comes over here, kind of a bigger section that comes over here, and a little one trying to come over here too. There's roots all the way around, so we're going to balance this guy out. We're going to go ahead and cut this guy right here. Get my other scissors here. So we're just kind of trimming around here. It's a very good bottom structure. You see how flat we are there? We are going out that way, we are going out this way, out this way. Really nice. This one, if you do stretch it out though, you see how long it is? We don't want it to be quite that long. I'm going to cut that off. And as you spread out some of the roots that are tucked in there from being forced to grow into that smaller section, you can kind of see where some of these roots go. This root is actually a U comes out of the tree right here and it's stuck inside this root that's curled right down here and comes through the bottom. That may be cut out someday. I'm not going to worry about it today. Again, I got a couple of longer ones here. Not cutting too much off that back side. And that's all I'm going to cut off of that tree right now. So again, we have a good flat bottom. We have a pretty good radial pattern going here. This root definitely is the strongest, and that's the second strongest, but they got all the feeder roots going off it. I actually will cut this one just a little bit shorter right there. And let's cut this guy right here. There we go. So we have our first our first tree. I'm going to try to get that one in there. So now we have to move the wires around this tree to get this thing to stay put. Alright. So I'm going to pull one of my wires over, and it's going to come around, I'm going to go underneath this big major root that I'm blocking with my arm. Right here, this big major root, I want it to go under that root, but secure on the other roots to hold this tree down. And then I'm going to pull this wire over here, and we're going to do some twisting. So whenever we're, we're twisting these guys in, we're going to lift up, see how much extra we have still? We're going to lift up and twist. If you lift up and twist, you're going to have less, le less of your, your wire just kind of twisting around each other to make what, one big bulky wire section, and that could really break these aluminum uh, wires. Okay. So as I have more, I can certainly cut off more. And as you can see, this tree is so wobbly it just fell right over. So when I get the other tree in here, I'm going to have to see if that other wire can come across the back side here to hold it in more. Okay, and I got this tree sticking up right now, or this root rather, that will tuck down with some rocks. 
So I've got this big root structure system here. A little bit more, a little more dirt to take out of. All right. So the bottom of that one, pretty flat as well. It's nice. I got this nice root here, this big thick one here. This one kind of took a turn. It's going that way. It'd be nice if this could flatten out over here. We want these to go all and spread out. So just from the bottom here. Now again, this tree has a little bit of a elongated uh, root system, so if I want to make it shorter, I want to make it shorter a little bit on this side to balance out the vigor. So, so I have this root system that's growing up right here. I can cut him off there, and the root system here will take over, hopefully. And i got a couple other feeders right here. And it'll be right at the soil surface. And I flip it over to the other side. Again, I'm just going to shorten some of these out on this side. And now as we look at this upside down, we have a little bit more of a round radial pattern. And then the next uh, repotting, hopefully we'll have a few more of these growing out and reaching out for the edges of the pot. That's all I want to cut on this one. So we decided this one was going to go back in here. This is where it'll get tricky with just me by myself. These are going to knock boots. These are going to knock their roots. And I have to see where I want it, hold the one in and hold the other one in and then get some wiring going. So if that one's there, I wanted this one more that way. Okay, so I have my spot. I bring the wire from over there back over to this side. Now I have a nice root right here. It's real big and thick. I don't want to damage that root, so I'm going to bring I'm going to bring this wire underneath it, right there. And I'm going to twist this one over back here more in the middle of the pot. It's kind of in the middle back here. And I'm going to go ahead and cut off the extra because we have way too much. When I wire my trees into my pots, I generally have too much wire. And I don't mind that because I want to make sure that I have enough and I can always trim off stuff here. So from the back, to get this tree where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and lift up again. And we got a lot of extra wire. We're going to try to make this happen. Okay. Now I'm going to stop right there because this tree's fallen. I'm going to put these kind of entangled a little bit here. So I don't want to go any further. And the reason I don't want to go any further is this set of roots could still fit underneath the wire I just put in. And actually it's going to have to fit underneath that wire. So, as we look at the tree structure right now, I've got a wire back here that's just loose. It's just waiting for me to secure down, but I can't do that until I prune these roots and get this one in there in our desired location. So, once again, I have a tree that's super long, and we don't want it to be super long on this side anymore. Now that is probably growing a good chunk of this tree, so I, I hope it doesn't damage the tree too much. But again, we want to balance the roots out. I'm not going to cut any off the side, or the front and back, I should say, in this tree. We're going to cut off of the two uh, longer sides. So, after all is said and done, we have again more of a round structure. This one is kind of going out this way. I'm going to leave it for right now. Um, we got boom, 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 boom. We got a nice little structure there. We're ready to find a place to put this guy now. And hopefully not lose all our trees. So we want it to be this way so I can see these branches over there. So I'm going to hug these trees into my body. Come in, on in, come in right here 
and put it where it needs to go. And look at that, stood up real nice and beautiful for me, but as this one falls over, mm -hmm. make sure it's still under the wire. And there it is, okay. And that looks pretty nice back there, okay. So if I can stand back a little bit and see where this is going, I can put it right there. So we're going to reposition these trees as we go. You can see that first tree wants to fall down now. And so does the second one. But this is why I didn't uh, secure that uh, wire right there. So now here's our wire. Right here. It's holding in this back tree and it's holding in this back tree in a real nice spot. Got all these roots here. What I don't like is I don't have enough soil underneath this tree. So a little bit of my pumice and lava rock mix, a little bit of my Akadama mix. Now I have some soil underneath there. I also lost a little soil under this one. There. I want those trees sitting up a little bit more in this pot. Okay. So now I can grab my pliers, kind of hold this tree and hold the pot a little bit and I can start twisting to bring these two together. Lift it, lifting up and twisting, it's coming together, holding these two trees in. Okay, so now go back to the front and see where we're at. I was able to move that tree to the right, or left rather, and this tree to the, to the right. My main tree is still up front here. And you can see I'm going to need a piece of wire in this back to really hold this back tree in place, or this front tree in place. But for right now, let's gl glimpse at it. So from this angle, I'm pretty pleased with it. Got this one leaning a little bit more to the right than I probably want. This one's leaning to the left a little bit, but I like the way that leans. However, I don't see the Y of the tree very much. So I lose some of that Y. So if I'm able to twist this one this way, I want to see a little bit more of this. So if I can twist that a little bit, and then come back and look. Yeah. So when I cut some branches up here, possibly, I'll see some trunk structure right in here. And here's my kind of my primary, my first primary branch here. This guy's leaning a little bit, but we'll be able to move him back when it's wired better. And this guy looks pretty good back here as well. Just leaning because I don't have it secured right now. I had mentioned at the start of the video that I wanted to see my trees in the new pot before I did any carving. For a couple of reasons. Again, we can look at each individual tree and say, hey, you know what, that, I like that tree all by itself now. Let me do that as a bonsai. That is one thing you can do, of course. You can take your forest and then maybe have three individual bonsai trees instead of that forest anymore. The other thing is, is I don't want to trim my trees I don't want to trim my trees only to take it out of that small pot, put it in the big pot and not like the way it looks. So I repotted it first. Now the trick about trimming this tree next is that these are not very securely in here like they were when we started this video. We were digging it out of the roots and it was so strong in there, we had to disconnect wires. So I'm going through my chopstick routine. I'm punching down the rocks, making sure we get rid of air pockets. And we wobble it back and forth. All the rocks go down and follow the chopstick down. 
We can do this one more time before we uh, get it watered. So there's the tree. There's the new forest. In a nice bigger pot and it's uh, looking pretty good as it is. It looks a little less condensed than it did before because we took it uh, on set, sp spread it out. They're spread out, but there still needs to be work on this tree. Um, and we will do that next because the way this variegated ficus grows, uh, and a lot of trees will do this, you're going to get a lot of growth from one, uh, one inner node. You might get like three or four branches from there. Azaleas are known for growing five branches from the one inner node, and you cut down to two. You keep these two maybe, or you keep uh, those three for a while. It depends on how, how far apart they grew. So we have to go in here and check to see uh, how things are growing, and we can thin this thing even out even more, and I can kind of make this more back into kind of this uh, maybe larger canopy look. We do have a gap right up in here, because this tree isn't as tall, so we'll trim this one down a little bit, trim this one down a little bit, and we'll have kind of more of an even canopy. Again, that's for aesthetics, based on how you like your tree and what you're looking at. I have a nice branch sticking out right here that I want to show you, and, uh, and then I'll get a close-up to show you even more. So I have this branch coming out right here, and first of all, I could probably cut this guy off right here, just because he's growing real close to the base. We want to follow that trunk up and see that trunk. My tree's in good shape; it's bleeding already. Now we can see this this branch take shape. Now, where I want, what I want to show you as far as the multiple growth is, look right here behind my finger. I've got a woody branch right here, and in the crotch of this branch growth right here, I have this other. Uh, this other leaf right there, super big leaf, it's growing right there. Guess what? We don't want that leaf. That's going to create a bulge on the So we don't want that. I'll cut that right there as close as I can. This is where a smaller, smaller scissors with a nice tip that's sharp there. So now if I can show you that again, I've got the little tiny green nub right there that you probably can't see on the camera, but now I've got this nice Y right here instead of three trying to grow out of there. And then as it comes out to the tip here, you can see again, right there, I'll show you the underside. I've got, this is the woody, this is what's hardened off already from the summer growth, but then this one started growing, so look, we have two to choose from here. Now, I want to make this whole tree shorter, so this time I'm going to cut this one off, and this tip right here will die off, and hopefully this will become the new leader. If it does not become the new leader and happens to die back, I've got a, the woody branch right here and this guy right here. So I have these two leaves. That might be a close cut, but it should grow. These do grow really well for me, and I have not had hardly, uh, not a lot of dieback when I have a leaf there. If there's a leaf there connected, it's good. So this kind of splits into two right there, and it kind of splits into two right here. So if this becomes a woody branch, I could cut this back down here for branch and branch and then we'll have these split as well. So this branch essentially is done on the tree right now. I don't have to cut it anymore unless I decide to shorten it down to where this one grows right here. I'm not gonna make that decision today because we repotted it, we're gonna cut more leaves, we'll let it grow and we'll see from there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into this tree and look for all those spots where there's multiple leaves growing and I'm gonna see if I can show you one more before I get to work and we'll catch you with the magic of editing when I'm a little bit further along. So let's try to go right here and I'm going to see if I can pull this branch out. So here this branch right here, this comes up right here, I got a woody branch right there and look right below it, it's hard, for, it was even hard for me to see. Right here. This leaf is growing right underneath this woody branch. This extra leaf we do not want. See, I pulled it a little bit. I don't want to damage it too much. There we go. We got rid of that one. Let's go further up the branch. Look right there. Right there. There's this leaf next to this woody branch, which comes up here and splits here and here with nice growth. I don't want this guy right there. That's three branches. Boom, 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 it's too much. Right up here, just not even a half an inch further, there's another leaf right there. Get rid of that guy. And then up here in the tip, I have a whole bunch of nice things going on. 
Um, not too many doubles. I'm just going to leave the tip alone for right now. So there's two branches of these three trees. So I have to go and do the entire tree this way before I decide to cut my shape down because I want to get rid of all the all the growth that is not needed for sure, like where those triples and quads are growing out. I'm going to get rid of all that first and then we'll uh, talk about maybe trimming this thing down. So I've got my work cut out for me. just thinned out tree number one with all of those where two were growing out. So that one's done. Now we got the tree right in front. We're going to do the same thing. So I've got this branch in here while I was doing this process that I wanted to show you. When you get deep into the tree, so I have a branch right here that, that died off, and I have a new leaf right here. So this is what we're cutting off. We're cutting off all these little extra leaves that are growing by another branch. Well, this one died off. So I'm going to go, not right to the edge, but close, and cut this dead branch off. Now the branch is not coming out here, the dead one, but this one could take over and become a new branch. And it's placed really nice as far as an every other pattern goes with the leaf that you have a tough time there it is just flip down but it's this one grows this way and this one grows that way so now I have every other in a nice spot this one died off so I will leave that one there so sometimes we can leave them there middle tree I think I'm pretty close to getting all those extra leaves uh, off of there now I move to the the last tree here we have my forest I have gone through every little tree and I've taken out probably two dozen leaves. Not a ton, but enough to start to thin the process or thin the trees out uh, in this whole process of making this the forest that I want it to look like. Now I want to kind of fix this structure a little bit. I don't mind the look the way it is right now. It gives it a lot of life. I still like how this kind of comes in and fills in this space over here. But we're just going to go around now and just kind of I'm going to start trimming the tree a little bit shorter based on our kind of our every other uh, uh, branch growth pattern, uh, directional pruning. So if I want the tree to grow this way, I'm going to cut the branches that go this way and so forth. And I'm going to start probably with the, the uh, center tree to, so I know where I'm going to start or where I'm going to base most of this growth from. If you can see on the camera here, this one's coming right out at us and it's the biggest one. And if I just cut back to right here, I just took out that major growth and I have this coming right here. Now that's going to come and grow straight up and be kind of awkward, but I have these branches back here now that uh, can grow uh, one way or the other. And I see both of my leaves are coming off the left side, so for right now I'm going to leave this here and I will probably get some back budding right in here. If there's one thing you recognize, I hope through watching this video, that this kind of tree back buds profusely. So the more light I give this, there's going to be all these new uh, uh, wannabe branches that will start. So I'm just going to leave this for now right there. Um, and we'll see. Maybe I'll cut it in the end anyway. And every time you look at it, it looks a little different. So I have this main tree here with this branch sticking up just a little bit too high right now. Um, I'm just going to cut it back just a little bit to make my tree a little bit more round and, and uh, just a little bit shorter, a little bit scaled back. So my main tree, this guy right here, is kind of the apex. 
but I've got some nice growth going right below it here. So I'm going to leave that here. This little branch right here is alive and growing this way. So here's the branch this way. This will grow this way. And when you have a big branch like this sticking way up, or a big leaf, it's a huge leaf. i just get that out of the way right now. Um, I have this one up in front that's also growing towards us. I'm going to trim that just a little bit. And then over here now, I've left some height over here. Because if you isolate this tree, i got a little bit of this growth over here. I can cut that down here. Cut this down here. And now this tree is kind of where I want it. All the way around. And I'll leave that for now, and we'll make a few more cuts as we get the other trees trimmed a little bit as well. The other thing I'm going to cut on this one real quick, as well, long as I remember it here, or while I'm remembering it, is there's a really weird branch in here that's growing straight across towards the front, right here. And this one I'm going to go way back inside here. It's at, a, at the Y of, a, of the trunk. And so when I get rid of this, right there, I just got rid of that big trunk. I could use that as a cutting take off some branches. We could stick this right into some uh, rooting powder and get it into some really fine uh, uh, bonsai soil or some uh, vermiculite and that could grow some uh, new root structures and have a new tree for someone else down the road. Put it off to the side. So that opened up this area right here just ever so slightly. I do not like this anymore. I'm going to cut it right off. And for right now, I'm just going to leave this right now and look at my other trees. So though this branch is cool, how it's developing up here, it's going to maybe overtake where our eye goes. So I'm going to cut this back to that branch, this down to this branch, just to shorten it. Now it's more a part of this tree than sticking out into the atmosphere. Um, I'm going to shorten this guy just a little bit up front. Shorten this guy up front. This guy in the back. We have nice growth on those bottom ones. And then up here, we've got some thickness up here. I'm just gonna, again, I'm just gonna kind of give it a, a general haircut right now. There's plenty of growth down below it to support my cutting. I'm not even going down to the first couple of uh, buds. I'm just cutting it just generally shorter, like a haircut right now. So when you go in to trim your tree, you're gonna look more carefully I can see this more than the camera can. I can see where I want to, uh, to make this grow uh, a little bit smaller um, and where the directional prune is going. Which one is going to go left, which one's going to go right. And I have a weird branch right here that's just growing. It's, it grows way back from in the center of this tree and it came back and it grew over this way. I could wire that up for a leader and it'd be like that. Right now it just wants to lay up here right now like that. So I'm going to cut this one deep within the tree because I just don't like where it's going and there are buds beneath it that'll grow. I just cut that right off and it didn't do anything to the, to the main structure of our tree. There's a couple spots in the tree that you can't see on camera that are just too thick in here. Wherever there's a buildup of growth we're just going to cut off. So now I've given that one a little bit of a haircut. I've got this great big leaf structure that kind of grows into this one too much, so I'm going to make this one really shorter, and we'll let that one grow and split into a couple different directions as well. And move that one down here. These I can leave for the for the time being. I can go in the back and get trim a couple of those. So here I have a nice split. Oh, here's a leaf that I missed in my other trimming, put that one right, right there. So I have this nice split right here. Here's this growth right here. I can get rid of that. I can cut all of those a little bit shorter because I have nice directional growth up a little bit higher. And again, this tree will back bud very, very well. So all this cutting I'm doing now, I'll have multiple leaves growing in no time. So we, we step back to take our look now. We still have a little bit of a flat top, so we don't, we don't have a curve per se, with this being the major tree. So I'll probably cut this down a little bit more. 
this looks a little bit thick over here. We just keep trimming until we, uh, until we like our balance. So we have a kind of a general uh, canopy here. It kind of goes around. I'll take a closer look here. But uh, there we have it. Another successful transplant. I will put a little bit more soil up on top, tuck in all these roots, give it some water, and I'm ready to put it back uh, in the growing plant room shelves and uh, make sure this thing, thing is uh, love and life. So that'll do it for this uh, edition of Dave's Bonsai. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. So one final shot for you. After I turned off the camera and cleaned up a little bit more of my workspace and looked at the tree, I was able to dig in a little bit further and make a few more trims. So as you can see in the front tree, you can see and follow the, the trunk of the tree a little bit higher up into the tree. And then both the right and left side, just a little bit more off. It's a lot more spacious. With the before and after, you can certainly see the difference. Um, new pot, bigger pot, you can see more trunk. And we'll just let this thing sit all winter long. It'll just slowly develop some root systems and be ready for the benches in the spring. I wonder what I should work on next. Dave's bonsai, uh, in the sense that I have a branch that splits into two, shoots in here, so I'm probably going to cut this thing off right about here this fall. I've taken my uh, knob cutter and I've gotten rid of some of that. So I just put them on the bottom, growing upwards into the we bag. We the trees and then we water as we need to. We'll try and get rid of those air pockets.